I, I like us to go to the book of Luke and leave, let me leave a thought with you. We have praised him. Now I want to challenge you. Luke chapter 1, and I'm going back to the theme for my Christmas season. Amen. Verse 28. Verse 28, Luke chapter 1 and verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Today we want to talk about the gift, the gift of God, the gift of God. Right through the scriptures, I have discovered that God is a given God. From the very inception of creation, God took five days and dressed a disorderly world back. We read in Genesis 1 that the earth was without form. The earth was without form and it was void. There was nothing void, nothing on the earth. Apart from it being void, there was total chaos in this place called earth. It was without form. Everything was mixed together. The water was mixed with the earth. The firmament was mixed in the water. Total disorder and God said let there be for five days God said let there be and God took this total disorder that once used to be earth and he created it into the into the most amazing planet that eyes have seen in the universe and where life can have its habitation. Here on earth, there is so much control for if we rise to a certain level in the, in the, in the universe, earth people, you would find that we would begin to lose balance and would not be able to exist because it is outside of God's created realm for the earth. Every time one thinks about this, you realize that creation had to be done by someone who is more than a genius. He had to be God. Because in so doing, for as long as time and memorial has existed, after God's creation, nothing has ever gone out of control. God has kept, kept the universe and earth with preservation. Preservation and God has also blessed earth with providence. And when we say providence, we mean that God takes control of it so that nothing goes out of control and most of what God has created has reproduced itself. Yes, 
scientists has believed that there are certain things that have become extinct. But by, by and large, everything has been preserved. There is no disorder to wake up in the morning and see the tree opposite, in the opposite way. No, everything is well preserved and the providence of God manages it well. For five days, God dressed it. And then the sixth day, God created man. And God says, let us. He didn't say, let there be. And there was. He said, let us make man. So you and I, we, we, we are blessed to be made by God. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, you know. Come on and let's give God a real big praise for that. Amen. Amen. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. If we are short, amen, we are fearfully and wonderfully. You could say what you want, amen, amen, amen. You could tell them so too. You could say what you want. I thank God for my cute Handsome, amen. Short self, amen. I'm, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. If you are tall, you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. So don't walk around and say, i too tall. What are you doing flying in the face of God? Are you too tall? You are amazingly wonderfully made. If you are very thin, one pastor, every time he sees me, he says, Wrong with you, boy. Why are you put getting so fat? I said, Brother, thank God that your metabolism is working as it is working. Because even though if you eat what I eat, you will never get fat. <laughs> God has no fashion you to remain thin. So you better thank God for remaining thin. Amen. He saw me in the grocery during Christmas time. And my trolley is almost packed with the most healthiest of things. And he sees, amen, about seven pounds of Rufus' leg and a turkey in my tray. And he said, look at what you're eating. Look at what you're eating. I said, you mean to say you watch all my groceries and that is what you are watching? I said, I said to him, would you want your members to, to treat you like this? Mm. His wife, at that time, his wife is as big as a me. <laughs> I said, Lord, don't say any more, Chris. Because <laughs> I could be, get away with my mouth in the road. <laughs> I said, so, amen. So please, please, don't, let's go another, let's talk about the Lord, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's talk about them. Say amen. Because, amen. So, amen. I'm fearfully and wonderful. You can say what you want. Amen. 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 Let me, amen. Let me deal with my challenges. Amen. I'm amen. And I was leaving home. I told Sister John, I said, take a good look at me, Sister John. I said, I feel good this morning. Amen. Amen. I just walk out. <laughs> Fearfully, you know, many a times we, you know, we, 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 we forget how good God, Amen. you know, we complain about and strut, you know, we stress on, on small things. We stress on small things. We complain on everything. Amen. But when we think about how God has just created this earth and God has created us, amen, for his, for his likeness. We have been created in the image of God for his likeness. In that we have sinned and even after we have sinned and after we have failed and we, have, we became a castaway from God. You know, God said to Adam, he said, Adam, he said, the seed of the woman is going to come one day and he's going to restore you the victory 
over the loss that you have had. So the word of God says that God was waiting for time to come to give restoration to us, to bring us to God that we, we can be in communion. We don't need a priest to do it for us. We don't have to be offering up a sacrifice every week or every day in order for us to have communion on entry to God. Jesus Christ came and paid the price. The love of God came and offered its, itself to us so that we can have this blessing. Now Mary must be must have been really highly favored because there are many Jewish girls who were devout and who were taught that they, they should look for one Jewish girl to, to give birth to this Savior. I guess in every time and period in the Jewish history, one parent was telling another family it could be you. It could be you. It could be you. It could be you. But if the, the blessings fell on Mary, not that Mary is to be worshipped, but she found favor with God. She was highly favored to bring this Redeemer, to bring this grace to the earth. You know, I love verse 30. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 30, really concludes the story, verse 30. The Word of God says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast found favor with God. You have found favor. God is allowing this grace that is going to come to the earth He's going to allow it to come through you. Today, I wanted, wanted to leave with you as I close this message that it is not just Mary who is highly favored. It is not just Mary who has found favor. But we who, are, who were lost has found favor. For the word of God tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse, uh, pardon me, Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 tells us that when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ came. Yes, we too. When we had no strength, when we had nothing, absolutely nothing, God favored us. The eighth verse is an amazing verse. The eighth verse says that God distributed his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So today, you know, as we, we look at the love of God, as we look at the, the goodness of God today, we can go home and rejoice in the fact that the Messiah has come. The Messiah has come and the Messiah had his assignment. Oh, if it wasn't for the grace of God, as the word of God says, the grace of God has appeared to all men. The whole world needs to be celebrated. Because the grace of God, it has appeared to all men. And as you know, who knows your theology, that grace means the unmerited favor of God. Oh, how God has favored us. How God, how God has has blessed us. 
you know, I, I was, I met my cousin um, in the market on yesterday. And she was so glad to see me. She hadn't seen me for a while. She said, I hear you on the radio so many times. She said, and you know what I enjoy about you is how you can look back. And she stood there for a while and we started to talk about our aunts and great aunts. And we began to look back, you know. I don't know about you, but I can look way back, look back at the coal pot that my, we grew up on. And go in by Mr. Lingi and buy the coal, and getting a few pieces of pitch pine to help make up the fire to burn for that pitch pine. I remember the ice box and the, that was the fridge. And I was telling another cousin of mine yesterday uh, something about the fridges, and he said to me, he said, Chris, you know how much fridge I have in my house, boy? I said, how much? He said, I have five fridges in my house. Uh, yeah, he said, I have five fridges. I said, I'm going to ask him, what are you doing with all them fridges, you know? He said, but, he said, I have about five. He said, because he, he has a mansion. He said, I have about five fridges. He says, so you, the thing that you have, you can bring it and you can leave it and I make have room for it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Jesus, this boy. But you know, we, uh, our parents, same, same, same cousin. We, 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 amen. That was a lot. To have one fridge was a luxury. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it seems almost like every time Christmas comes, that any time the fridge used to shut down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so that our parents used to, you know, you, you, you really had it tough. But, but God raised us. And there are many of you, some of our young children here are so privileged. So, so privileged. In fact, uh, I, I watch some people, because I, I just have one child, um, but... It, some smaller ones I watch, they just come and open the door just to see the light come on. <laughs> Help carry them. Be, and, and take out nothing on the fridge. Just open it. Just watch in the fridge and the light come on. Rick, amen. Carrying up the light bulb. The light bill. Carrying the light bill up all the time. Only putting on the light. I'm just watching it. But God has been good to us. Amen. And that he does doesn't, didn't cleanse us of our, our sins to make sure we have salvation from being lost. But he has blessed us. And I've discovered, I've discovered, I have traveled a lot of places in the world. I have been in South Africa and going to the township and just see galvanized boots little boots, little table outside where people cook and skin their sheep and their goat to prepare their meat to eat. And some of them, their sheds are not even as long as this pulpit is, nor even sometimes much wider than it is. I've seen poverty as, as I've never seen. I've been to Panama, amen, in the shanties and see See people rush for card fridge boxes and stove boxes. And I've seen thousands of just boxes made into houses. And people walk in the streets barefooted, barefooted in, in Panama. Amen. And I've, I've, I've been, amen, I've been to, to Venezuela right up the road. And you wonder why so many Venezuelans are coming in and you know, our heart reaches out to them. Beautiful, pretty young people. But when you go right next door up the road there, you see the mountaintop people who live in Picton and Laventil. You are, we are, they have to be thankful to God when you go to Venezuela and you watch the shanties out there in those places right out there. You know, right on our neighbor's doorstep. We have a lot to be thankful to God for. 
Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. As bad as your situation is, amen, there are some people, amen, who are dying to have what you have. Amen. So as we close our sermon here this morning, I want you to, 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 to be thankful to God. Amen. amen. That you are favored. Yes, you are favored firstly for the salvation of the Lord. And then you are favored in that God has kept you alive in spite of, through dangers, toils, and snares, you already made it. Amen. amen. Just touch somebody next to you and say, amen, I've made it. Amen. I'm, I'm, I've survived. I've survived the worst. I've survived the worst. Amen. I've made it. Amen. You have survived. It, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Amen. It could have been worse. But come on and let's stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord.